Hello! I am Mac, at least for a day, and everything's going to be okay. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a game called Aliens Dark Descent. Now, how I would describe this game is being very similar to the indie game The Darkest Dungeon. Uh, now, it's, it's, not, it's not similar to The Darkest Dungeon in that there's turn-based battle system. The battle system is basically uh, real-time strategy, but a lot of the systems definitely seem like they took inspiration from Darkest Dungeon, such as the you, you have a squad of four members, just like in Darkest Dungeon, and the marines that you command can have positive or negative traits. So like in Darkest Dungeon, um, you know, they can develop negative traits. The, the Marines in this game actually start with, they, they all start with negative traits. Basically, they're, they're kind of, if they're new, level one and unseasoned, they'll have weaknesses. You can eventually get rid of their, their weakness traits, but as as you use them as as they undergo stress um they can develop traumas so traumas are also negative um effects which is very realistic because when you're when you're in combat especially against combat against horrific aliens like the alien xenomorphs from the alien franchise it makes sense that you would you know experience a lot of post-traumatic stress and you know, develop negative traits because of that. Um, it's also possible to get rid of the those negative traits, but it's fairly difficult. But I really like that. Um, obviously, this is a big IP, the Alien franchise, so this is not an indie game. However, I feel like this studio, um, not that they're an indie indie developer, but they're. It's a very innovative game. It's very well made. Um, I really enjoy it. That's why I'm talking about it. Well, first of all, the story is set on a moon. It's very similar to the plot of the second Alien movie, Aliens. So there's this moon or planet that has been infested by the alien xenomorphs. And the Marines are there. And that's the basic premise of the game. It's, it's definitely not a, a game made completely after the, the, the movie. It's, it's its own thing, it's its own story about a moon that's become infested. This uh, group of marines arrive in their ship. They get shot down because of a planet quarantine, so basically they're crash landed. So they have no choice but to investigate what happened here. Um, they enter different towns and other settlements um, on, this, on this moon called Lethe. Um, and yeah it, so you go in with your squad of four people you investigate you complete missions to try and, and figure out what's going on and like i said as you fight um you fight both humans and xenomorphs there are crazy humans who are living on the planet who have basically gone insane and decided that the aliens are a good thing and they want to be quote unquote chosen by the aliens and um you know get an egg planted inside them which i mean i don't know why they would ever think that because it just kills them it's not like they, it's not like they get turned into aliens and get powers or anything it's just going to kill them but and of course the aliens themselves now I will say this is a very difficult game, which is a, is a good thing for a lot of people. Um, it's definitely not boring. It's not like too easy. In fact, I tried playing the game in normal mode, and at one point I had to <laughs> give up. And unfortunately, you can't change the difficulty. Um, mid game, which I think is good. I kind of don't like it when games allow you to um, change the difficulty at any time. Kind of makes things too easy. So I had started the game in normal mode, and I, <laughs> I, I got to this one part. Um, this isn't too much of a spoiler because it's a fairly early game 
thing. It's it's the first it's the first mission area you go to, but near the end of that mission part, you end up going underground to an underground mine, which is completely infested by aliens. It's become a giant alien nest, and the boss at the end of it is a is an alien queen. Now the alien queen wasn't the really difficult part of it, but after we beat the alien queen. Like the whole hive went nuts coming after us. Like they would nonstop be attacking us. And it wouldn't have been so bad because it would have been fairly easy for me to have the Marines run out and escape. But unfortunately, after we killed the queen, they wanted us to rescue a hostage and carry them out in addition to getting a DNA sample from the queen's body and everything and there was almost no way to complete well getting the queen sample wasn't hard but the real problem was carrying the the person that we'd rescued um, because whoever whichever marine carried that person was way slowed down so there was no way for all of us to run out together um, if I tried to have everyone run then um, the marine that was carrying the guy would get killed and then another marine would have to pick them up and then they would end up dying um, and yeah I, I finally gave up after the, the game does have a checkpoint system so my checkpoint was set at when we killed the queen but I just could not make it back out of that hive after that and so I gave up I went back restarted the game from easy mode and now I've been playing in easy mode, which I don't I don't feel bad for changing to easy mode because even in easy mode, it's a very challenging game. Um, the the gameplay that you're seeing now is from easy mode, um, and it's it is much more manageable. But if I mess up, people can die uh, pretty easily, and yeah, <laughs> uh, big thing is also similar to darkest dungeon is there is permanent um permanent death of your marines um however if all four of your marines die then you get a game over screen you have to go back to a checkpoint so it is possible to lose all uh, lose three of your marines and maybe one could escape and get out of the mission area um but ultimately you you can't lose your final marine because all of your squad being killed makes makes you restart at a checkpoint um and also unlike darkest dungeon you have a very limited number of marines when you start the game you only have eight ten you only have ten marines in your ship um there's other people on the ship like doctors engineers and everything but you only have ten marines uh, you can get more. Um, like I said earlier, you can rescue people, um, but very rarely do you find a marine that you can use to rescue. Um, usually you find doctors and engineers, scientists, stuff like that, which also help on your ship. Um, but you definitely can't rely on getting a lot more marines to replace the ones that you lose. Um, unlike Darkest Dungeon, which after every mission you could recruit more more guys, um, in this game, if you lose almost all of your marines, your, your, your whole game is probably pretty much ruined. And another aspect that I really like is that even if you're on easy difficulty, the game slowly gets harder as you go along. Not just not just going to new areas with with greater challenges, but if you take too long, uh, like if you take too long in one area, the the infestation level of the entire planet starts to go up. So you kind of need to hurry through the missions and complete objectives because as the entire planet or the entire moon's infestation level increases all enemies and all amount of enemies uh, increase in power and, and number and it, it just gets a lot more difficult so um, I'm really enjoying it but like I, like I said it's a very challenging game even on easy mode um, but I, I think that's kind of a good thing. It's like I said, it's like Darkest Dungeon, where at times you will feel like it's impossible and it gets very difficult. And and like I said, there's the stress system as as your fighters 
start to increase in stress like as they get attacked by aliens um they have like three bars of stress when it when their stress gets to 100 percent, a bar gets lit up if they get to the max of three bars um they become much more difficult to command like they may ignore your orders uh their their performance in battle is much worse um if, yeah if, if everybody gets to max stress you pretty much need to run and and that's a really cool thing about this game is at many points you will have to run um it's not like you know a normal kind of game where you get in just kill all the enemies and finish enemies will always keep coming there's spawn points for the aliens and they will slowly start to spawn more of them um you basically need to get in get your objectives finished and basically get to the extraction point and get out um which i think might be what extraction style games are if so this is my first game first time playing an, an extraction style game um but cool thing is you don't have to complete all the objectives you can you can run and and escape once you get to the extraction point anytime you want um so if if you're if you've taken a lot of damage if you if you've run out of med kits to heal your guys and your stress is too high you can't escape obviously if you're so deep in that you can't escape without getting killed then you're in trouble but usually usually you can always um run out and escape um uh and and you can always return with another group of marines to continue the objectives that you still had to complete in the area um now moving on from the whole actual gameplay um well let me let me say that i i, I like th i like the different systems that you have um you can set up like these little turrets i forget what they're actually called but you can set up a little turret thing like if you know a whole bunch of enemies are going to be coming at you soon you can set up this turret that's like a a machine gun that will automatically shoot enemies for you and there's like different abilities that your marines can use and you command them to use and in, in, it's a very tactical game so like suppressing fire you can order one of your marines to use suppressing fire and that's where they fire bullets that aren't very powerful but it slows the enemies down so if a whole bunch of aliens are coming at you you can use suppressing fire and it will slow them down so they don't reach you too quickly and that can allow like the turret to mow them down and kill them before they reach the turrets and your marines then there's also like shotgun abilities if you've got a bunch of enemies right on top of you you can use shotgun um and that kills close up enemies real easily and then there's also um like grenade launcher if there's a large group of enemies you can't fire you can't fire a grenade launcher when they're right on top of you because grenades will kill your own guys but if there's a large group of enemies headed towards you and they're far enough away you can launch a grenade and kill a whole bunch of them with aoe so it's a very it's a very tactical uh battle system which i really enjoy it's not just about um you know mindlessly going somewhere and shooting everything you have to actually think about what abilities you're going to use i think it's showing on the screen right now using a grenade to kill face huggers face huggers are <laughs> a real bad problem obviously if a face hugger gets on your gets on one of your marines um and and there's there's not other marines nearby normally they can shoot it before it gets on somebody's face but um if a face hugger gets on somebody they're pretty much dead um i think there's some kind of special item that can be used to extract them before they infest your guy with an alien and kill them but i haven't gotten those items yet and i don't know when those get unlocked um so yeah <laughs> face huggers are pretty much an instant death for one of your marines if that happens um, other cool thing is when you enter a room, um, you, you can, your Marines don't normally split up, but you can command them to do things within the room like loot boxes or weld doors shut, um, to keep the enemy out. Uh, and it, it's, 
it's really fun like coordinating all your marines together having several of them do different things within the within whatever room you're in um it, it's a very teamwork based kind of thing it's not multiplayer it's you're commanding just for for fighters that you control uh, but you have to coordinate all of them together in order to succeed um, like one healing another uh, you know one person doing suppressing fire well maybe another one uses the shotgun or sets up the turret uh, it's it's very it's a very cool tactical system and I really enjoy it even though it's it's real time um, thankfully you, you can make a settings to where the game pauses when you're selecting an ability like shotgun suppressing fire and turret and all that um which which i did uh the it, it can also be set to slow-mo which i didn't like slow-mo doesn't slow things down nearly enough um i definitely recommend at least when you first start out um setting it to uh pause the game when you are um selecting abilities to use because enemies can come at you so fast there's really no time to think about and also there's kind of a controller problem when, when you're selecting an ability it's like really hard to get the button to move you over to the um to the abilities that you're trying to select they didn't really design it very well i wish you could just use the d-pad or the control stick to select abilities but you have to use l1 or r1 and pressing them doesn't always work. You have to like really quickly tap them. So that would be one of my main complaints about the game is some of the controls are kind of difficult and don't work well. And that's why you pretty much have to have it so the game pauses when you're choosing abilities because otherwise um, you will die <laughs> trying to choose abilities if the enemies are coming at you in slow-mo. Um, but anyway, uh, Moving on from the battle system um, and exploration system, another cool thing is in between in between missions, when you go back to the Otago, that's the ship that you that your basically your base of operations is the ship that that your group um, crash landed with. Um, there's a main commander lady. She's like the main character in that's kind of who you play as you're like a commander back at the base and you're telling the marines what to do and everything but anyway when your marines return to base um you there's kind of like a role play choice uh, text-based choice system where um if you're not currently deploying a mission you can advance the days and like each day there will be a choice where something happens like you can send out a search party um, which is all just text based um, but if you send out a search party like you'll lose a day um, where you can't uh, you can't you know deploy a mission again the next day and that's that's where the whole running out of time comes in um, a mission going on a mission only takes one day but doing the text based choice system um, that can waste more days, which, you know, uh, advances the meter towards the next infestation level and the, the level of the enemies will increase. Um, other things you can do on the ship are like the medical bay, which is very important because after, after you do a mission and your marines have undergone lots of stress, they'll be exhausted and they won't be able to de be deployed again so you'll need to assign doctors to them um, assigning doctors to them will decrease the amount of time it takes for them to rest and recuperate from from a mission so that you can use them again um, you do have more than you, you have like 10 marines so you could just go ahead and go do a mission without them with you know another four marines that aren't tired but um you know, if you want your strongest fighters, then you're going to have to heal them. Um, and uh, I really like the level up system. So the the other another area in your ship is the barracks. You go to the barracks, and as your marines get experience, they level up, and you can choose different positive traits to give them. Uh, it's, it's similar again to Darkest Dungeon, but I think in Darkest Dungeon. 
positive traits were just random, but um, in in this game you do, you are able to customize them, and you always have uh, three choices of a new trait to add them. So you can give them hacking ability, so they can hack into doors that wouldn't otherwise be accessible. Um, or you can make them like a gunner to be really good at using heavier guns, uh, recon, um, recon class to make them faster, uh, medical class to make them faster at healing other uh, members and stuff like that. And it's a pretty cool system. And yeah, and then there is the science lab. Science lab, you unlock other special things that can help your group. Um, the, the science lab requires DNA samples so when you kill xenomorphs sometimes they will drop DNA samples and you can have your marine search them collect the DNA sample and DNA samples are basically currency that you use to purchase new abilities at the science lab and then of course there's the the workshop where you can buy guns you get like you get materials which is another form of currency when you're exploring um, the areas and the materials are used to buy upgrades to weapons. So you can buy new types of weapons. Um, it requires higher level fighters though to equip the weapons. Like gunner is required for certain heavy guns. Um, then like recon will use like special lighter weapons um, and stuff like that. And also healers will equip special light weapons. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying it. Um, Aliens: Dark Descent. I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's not for the faint of heart. It is a very challenging game, even in easy mode. But I really enjoy it because of that. If it was really easy, I'd know. I, I find it very hard to find games that I actually enjoy. Um, like all the time, I'm buying games that people say are are good and I find them just so boring um, so it's actually really rare for me to get a game that I actually enjoy and is actually um, something that I want to keep playing and that I'm addicted to <laughs> um, like for instance I've tried playing The Witcher 3 and even though people sing the praises of that game I got so bored and could not keep playing it but that's just me I'm weird and it's just very very difficult to please me maybe it's because I'm getting old and I just, I don't know, can't keep my attention span on certain things as well. But but anyway, Aliens Dark Descent is a really good game, and I definitely recommend it. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll do a later video where I do a full review of it, but maybe not. Maybe I'll just have this uh, first impressions video um, showing you some of the gameplay and my first impressions and letting people know that it is a good game to play. I don't think it's getting a lot of noise for it, probably because there's a lot of stigma around Alien games. Obviously some are really good, like Alien Isolation, but one of the worst games of all time, um, Aliens, Aliens Colonial Marines, um, was, is considered one of the worst games of all time, and because this game involves Colonial Marines, it may have kind of put people off it, like not want to try playing it because of that fact that it's about colonial marines so people think that oh this is a game where you use colonial marines and and it's it's it, obviously it's a way different game than that that was a first person shooter um and it just wasn't well made um obviously this is way different it's a real-time strategy uh, one one other criticism I, criticism i have for this game is the dialogue is really bad like the, the military guys will say the most cliche things or the most dumb things. Um, it, it's hard to explain. I could give you a few examples. Like at one point, um, so if an alien dies near you, they spray acid, which damages your Marines. And the first time that happened, um, somebody said, it's blood is acid. And one of the Marines said, what type of blood, what blood type is that? <laughs> Um, it's like the dialogue for the Marines is so bad, but it kind of adds to the charm in a way. They're like very incredibly, uh, stereotypical 
military types, um, which is kind of how it was in the first Aliens, uh, sorry, the second Aliens movie. So it kind of mimics that. And it's kind of good because it doesn't get you really attached to them. Because like I said, it's very likely that these Marines will die. So you kind of treat them as like the grunts that um, that they are, that you know they they are somewhat expendable. But like I said, you don't want to lose too many because you only start out with ten and you very rarely get more. So you have to keep them alive as best as you can. But you know you don't get any kind of you don't get too attached to them if they die because it's very likely that that they will die like one wrong move one one point of not being prepared enough and and you will lose fighters um and i'm starting to get used to the annoying um military jargon that they use uh and, and like i said it kind of adds to the charm but yeah other than that um aliens dark descent definitely gets my seal of approval i don't usually play licensed games made after franchises but this game was really well made uh, I think because it took some inspiration from the darkest dungeon um, which is a very good indie game that you should also play if you ever get the chance um, but anyway that's my first impressions of aliens dark descent I have been Mac thank you for joining me for a day and remember everything's going to be okay